want to share with you guys the results of, of the summary of our return to worship survey. Many people right now are trying to get back to church and pastor, when are we getting back to church? And um, when will that happen? And boy, how long um, we, are you guys going to hold out? We got people going back to church already. And, and the Bible says that, boy, we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. And so pastor, why are we not going to church? So let me start off with this. We had a number of people when COVID first came, a number of churches, when, when um, 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 COVID, um, COVID first became pronounced, it became uh, um, a um, centripetal issue, it became an important issue. Um, the um, CDC, the World Health Organization advised, you know what, guys, want you guys to shelter in, don't get together in um, large crowds. This is the, um, um, the um, coronavirus, it's the new kind. Um, there are other kind of coronaviruses, and so we had churches gathering, we had people say, you know what, we're not going to listen to them. We're going to, we're going to trust our God. We're going to walk with our God. We, we shouldn't be forsaking the, selves of, um, forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. And guys, unfortunately, many of those people gathered and many of those people ended up with the coronavirus. Some even ended up dead. And so, so you know what, you guys, it's not a matter of, you know what, not trusting God. It's not a matter of trying to be disobedient to God. What it's a matter of, guys, it is a matter of not trying to put our Lord God to the test. So in Matthew chapter 4, where Satan was trying to tempt Jesus with what he already owned, um, Jesus says, I will not put my Lord God to the test. So I think many of us who have ignored, <clears throat> ignored the advice and the advisory of, especially early on, of what the World Health Organization said, what doctors were saying, what the um, CDC was saying, I think it wasn't a matter of if our God could protect us. It was, why would you put your God to the test? So the Bible does tell us to walk in faith, but the Bible also talks about not being naive, and the Bible talks about exercising wisdom. So when you talk about not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together, I don't think God was talking about in the midst of a national disaster. I don't think God was talking about in the midst of a um, of, a, of a national medical disaster. So I think he was talking about under normal circumstances, I don't want to see you guys forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. So with that in mind, we want to do, we do want to make church as soon as we can. So as a church, let me share four things that are governing our decision on when we want to go back to church and when we'll open up and when our elder board feels current with that. So we have an elder board. Our elder boards um, consist of Judge Mark Leverett, Elder Noble Crawford, Elder Lamar Bailey, and myself. And so we get together to talk about the spiritual direction of our church, the doctrine of our church, and the policies and pursuits of our church at least once a month. And we also go with our finances of our church on a monthly basis. Many of you all saw them last. They all came to church at our last anniversary. They all came together. They were there worshiping with us at the same time all together. So anyway, we're getting together, and there are four things that shape um, our decision. So we are not date-driven. We are, we are milestone-driven. We are not date-driven. We are milestone-driven. Guys, trust me, guys. I want to get back to church. I, I love church. I love church people. I want to get back to church, right? Here are four things. Number one, is it spiritually responsible? Is it spiritually? Are you doing what's in the best spiritual interest of your people to have them come in um, knowing their lives can be in danger. Proverbs says the naive see danger and continue. We see danger with COVID right now. As recently as this week, um, statistics, the COVID statistics are going up in 22 states, and Texas is one of those states. Number two, is it medically advisable? So initially we saw the, the, the counsel and the advice to, to shelter in, wear a mask, wash your hands for 20 seconds, practice physical social distancing. And then the economy began to um, be challenged because you know what, guys? I'm, um, I'm tired of being home. Uh, the economy is struggling. You guys can go back out there. They had set forth some guidelines. I want to be a good indicator to go back. It was something like 14 consecutive days of the stats being um, um, stable or decreasing. We didn't go 14 days with the, with the stats um, on coronavirus decreasing or staying stable. But then we announced, guys, let's begin to reopen things and resume. And so in many of the places that began to reopen early, they see that they are now seeing their COVID stats begin to increase at a disproportional rate again. So is it medically advisable? Number three, 
Is it personally conscionable? Uh, are people really open and ready to go back to these large group settings? So, boy, there are some people who are daredevils, like, you know what, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm just going to go out here and do this thing. But for the most part, many churches have opened back up. Many Anglo churches have opened back up. Some African American churches have opened back up. And guys, they're only seeing a fraction of the people who normally would come to their worship experience. And you've got to start somewhere. But boy, is it safe? Is it advisable? Is it a good time to start back? <clears throat> Next, guys, um, um, we want to make sure the quality, um, I'm going to give you five of them, quality. Is the quality of the in-person service going to rival the quality of the online experience? So many of you all have a vision for going to church, but you envision church at Easter. I'm sorry, you envision church back in March. Um, you envision church back in February before we had social distance and the people were close and we were hand clapping and singing praises to God. We were hugging one another. We were greeting one another, having long conversations after church. We were fellowshipping, drinking coffee um, um, in church and having a good old time together in the gospel. But the reality, guys, when you come back now, you can't be, you got to wear a mask. You got to use um, hand gel. You got to be six feet apart from one another. You don't have the don't have the dynamic of a full sanctuary. So all those things will be lost if you go back right now. And number, and number five, is it racially sensible? Is it racially sensible? So the reality, guys, the guys, there are some ethnic groups that are predisposed to coronavirus um, in, a, in a disproportionate way from other races. There are certain groups who have um, 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 immune deficiencies or, or their immune system um, is weakened or compromised. They're saying, guys, right now, we don't want you all being exposed um, to large groups right now because this can really impact you negatively. The African-Americans, African-Americans are, 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 are contracting COVID at a higher rate than our Anglo brothers and sisters, than our Anglo brothers and sisters in creation. So guys, we're a predominantly African-American church. So we have to take that into account when we begin to gather again. We don't want to put you guys in the way of danger. So pastor, give me um, um, five or seven more minutes, okay? Um, Pastor, what were the what the stats say? So we had a number of things that showed up on the stats, and some of the things were like this. Um, um, Pastor, um, when should we go back? Um, what we looked at was that uh, we had the um, highest percentage of people wanted to go back in August. The highest percentage of people wanted to go back in August. The next highest was um, um, in July. That was 15 percent. The next highest was the end of July. That was 12.8 percent of people who want to go back at that particular time. What about volunteers? So see, it's one thing to come to church, but we got to have volunteers in one church. There are volunteers all over the place. Um, our volunteers pretty much follow the same pattern. Our volunteers didn't feel comfortable coming back and volunteering until about August. So of course, there were some small percentages who want to come back sooner, but the majority and the masses didn't want to come back until August. I'm not saying August or day. We're going to evaluate this month by month, give you guys a week notice and say, guys, come back to church. All right, smile at me. So we're keeping our eye on this. In fact, we're discussing this every week about where the stats saying, um, um, with our five factors, have things changed? Here's some fast facts, guys, for the survey. We had 80% um, of people who, who, who completed the survey were women. We had about 25% um, of our database to complete the survey. Um, what was important for returning? Hand sanitizer, social distancing, and masks being required. What do we miss most about the in-person worship experience? They miss the live service, they miss in-person fellowship, and they miss live worship. This was our group. Um, this may not be um, applicable to all groups everywhere. What's important elements for the streaming? People said quality of teaching and the quality of the stream. Where are most people watching our stream? Tonight we're on Facebook Live, but most people are watching our stream on YouTube. We have the largest of people watching our stream on YouTube. Next is Facebook Live, and third is our church website. Number seven, um, how many people in our congregation and their immediate family have been impacted by COVID? 4.8% of those who completed our survey have been impacted by COVID. Shocking number. 15.5% of the people who completed this survey have been displaced or lost their employment um, due to COVID. Um, 
Next is 50% of those who survey, who put our survey, were volunteers at our church. So guys, that's the stats, that's the facts. I've been trying to share with you guys about three weeks now. Finally get a chance to kind of share it with you all and open up and share it with you. Guys, if you have questions, feel free to send your questions to info at discoveredestiny.org. We'll be more than happy to address your question. You want a phone call? Put your phone number in there. We'll be more than happy to give you a phone call as well. Until then, guys, continue to join us on the stream. We are praying for you. We're praying for your kids. We want to bring you quality um, instruction. Again, I want to thank um, Pastor Tim Fuller. Dr. Tim Fuller, I want to thank Pastor Aaron Wills for sharing the pulpit uh, while I was out for about three weeks. And uh, we're excited to be back this weekend's Father's Day. Looking forward to sharing with you guys on Father's Day. I promise you, we want to talk to fathers and father figures about how to go further, faster um, as a father. So guys, make sure your family is there. Make sure you guys are checking us out. Hey, we love you. We're praying for you. Um, if we can help you or serve in any kind of way, please email us at info at discoverdestiny.org. God bless you. Have a great evening.